DNS is all about delivering military capability to our armed forces, and so much of that is technically demanding equipment at the highest edge of uh, technology. Uh, and what that means is that we need people who can understand that, work alongside industry and our suppliers, and ensure that we get the absolutely very best uh, specification of equipment for our money in years to come. And our experience shows us that uh, by training people in engineering, be it apprentices or indeed bringing in graduates, then indeed that's the best way of doing it, growing from below. With apprentices, it's very exciting in as far as we're bringing people in at very young ages, uh, often straight from school, albeit we do have some which are more mature than that and we're very pleased to have them. But actually what it means is that we can, we can grow and develop them so that they can have a full career in the DNS and in the engineering environment ahead of them. DNS faces a major demographic challenge over the next 10 years. Within 10 years, about half of our engineers are able to retire and that's going to leave a massive gap in our capability. As an engineering organisation, we need to continually regenerate our people um, and the increase in numbers on apprentice and graduate schemes is aimed to start to fill that gap. That has required us to go from our 60 entry two years ago up to a target of 230 over the next years. Um, we've not only increased the numbers, we've also sought to increase the quality. So we changed our graduate induction process, we've revamped the Tom Navard Memorial Competition um, and we're tightening up on our training schemes. I chose the apprenticeship rather than university. Uh, one, because of the debt that you get with the university. The apprenticeship, you're paid to learn, um, so you haven't got that debt behind you. Um, I did a HNC in marine engineering and I've now moved into submarines. So it's going to be a really good basis in terms of sort of naval architecture, mechanical principles, um, electronics. I also chose the apprenticeship because it gave you experience in the workplace. So you're working with people of different ages, different backgrounds, as well as working alongside the Royal Navy. You get to go out on board the submarines and the ships, see the equipment actually working there and then, um, how it all integrates across the whole ship. So I can actually apply that in the workplace and hopefully work my way up. I took up the modern apprenticeship scheme because my previous employment was sort of going nowhere. Um, I needed a new challenge, a new career, and I found the scheme on the civil service website. The tests involved, they appeared daunting, but I have went on to uh, the internet, I've done a few practice questions and everything to prepare myself for it. The first year um, has been college based, it's been quite challenging, it's because of my age having to get back in the mindset of learning again and once your mind is in that frame you, you're sort of in a nice little bubble and you're able to progress right through with no problems. You know, you're, you're able to get on here, you're able to build a new career, you're able you know, to pro progress. It's something that I couldn't do in my previous employment. I think the, the opportunity to work on the, the kit the, the armed forces use, uh, DNS who I work for are the procurement agency, so it was good to see a range of, range of equipments. I uh, spent 18 months in the weapons operating centre and that's led to a bandy role, uh, which is a, a development role. So after the apprenticeship, I've still got a bit of guided career development. I was uh, behind the apprentice stand at the DNS Families Day, um, trying to encourage young people to come into engineering through an apprenticeship route rather than A-levels and a degree. When I did my A-levels, I didn't do very well. I wasn't ready. I don't think I wasn't matured enough in the academic area. And yeah, so I didn't do very well. It meant that if I did go to university, I did get a place at Plymouth. Um, I'd have to do a foundation year, and I decided I didn't want to do that. And as I've been working for a year, it was nice to actually get some money at the end of the month, and I thought I don't want to revert back to having to just go to university, do more education, and not get paid. The best thing about being a mod apprentice is that we get a really good, varied education. We get a lot of hands-on experience. We also get a lot of uh, time to spend with other companies so we can see how they work. I considered university and did have a university place but I decided that an apprenticeship would have been better because I get experience, experience along with the qualifications. I'm hoping that this apprenticeship would lead to a good career within the Ministry of Defence and Engineer and possibly afterwards to develop my skills with further learning, possibly a degree. There's a sense of pride being within the Ministry of Defence and also I like being a model apprentice because I feel that the MOD are always willing to help you further yourself and get the best education you need to make a successful career.